Quite often, as part of a coursework or practical examination task, you're required to import a CSV file into a table in an Access database. So in this folder here, I've got a CSV file containing information about music records. It's contained in a file with a .csv file extension, but the instructions also apply to text files with other extensions, such as .txt. I'm going to import the information into a blank database, but the steps would be the same if you wanted to import um, the information into an existing database. So I'm going to select blank here in Access, and I've already typed in a name. So the CSV file is called Prices Records. I've just uh, used the same name for my database, and I've selected a, a folder, and now I'm going to click Create. More recent versions of Access quite often give you this um, blank table when you first open. So I'm going to click the cross to get rid of that. I don't want that. I want to create my own. So I'm going to go to the External Data tab, and there are sections on the toolbar here, one for import and one for export. Um, the export one can be used for things like exporting the results of queries into uh, Excel spreadsheets. That can be quite handy. Um, but in this uh, instance, I'm going to import, and I'm going to import a text file. So I'll click the text file button. And the first thing it's going to do is ask where that file is. So I'm going to click Browse. And here it is. It's in uh, so it's in that folder there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the source data into a new table in the current database. Now CSV stands for comma separated variable. And what that means is that inside the file, um, the pieces of information are separated by a comma. And that's also known as uh, delimiting. So here we've got a choice of whether our file is delimited. So there's a particular character separating the pieces of information, and usually that's either a comma or a tab, uh, or we've got fixed width, and so that means a certain number of characters is allocated for each field. In this case, we know that it's um, delimited because of the name, CSV. We can see um, the information here, and we can see the commas in there. So now I'm going to click um, Next, and it's already selected comma, so I don't know whether that's the default or whether it's uh, detected that in there, but you can see that if you select one of the other options, the information doesn't appear as a table. So when you've got the right one, it looks like a table of information. And the top row of um, data in there isn't part of the information in the database. It's actually the database field titles. Now, when we're importing this into a spreadsheet, it wouldn't matter because you don't have field titles. But in this case, we can tick the box to say that the first row contains names of fields. And I'm getting a warning here to say that some of the information is invalid for access field names. So that might be because it contains uh, reserved words, things like date or time, or because it contains invalid characters such as space. So um, it says it'll automatically assign valid names. So I'll just go with those. We can change them in a minute if you want to. So there we go. OK. So I think that's it for that um, page. Well, what, what you can also select actually is um, a or what we call a text qualifier. So that means what character is it that surrounds text? Now, if we look in the medium column, um, we can see that the um, there is speech marks around um, the some of the entries. So I'm going to select um, double quotes as my text qualifier. If some of the entries aren't appearing quite correctly, you could try adjusting that, um, but I think that looks okay now. So I'm going to click Next. And on this stage in the wizard, what we can do is you can select each of the columns, and don't forget to look out for the scroll bar. So there are more um, columns over to the right. And we can adjust the name if we want to at the top, and we can adjust the data type. Notice that we can select text, but we can't choose the number of characters, but we can do that later on if we go and edit the table. We can choose whether or not the information is indexed, or we can actually skip that field. Um, so all of these fields are actually text, which is the default, so I'm not going to change any of those. But you might want to look through the data to make sure that it's correctly identified dates or numbers. And go on to the next stage. So with a database, um, 
you quite often want a primary key. So a primary key is something that should be unique about each record in the database. So if you had a database of cars, for example, the primary key might be the registration number because no two cars should have the same one. But in this particular case, there might be um, several you know, uh, records by the same artist. So artist won't be unique. There might be several records with the same title. So things like greatest hits, for example, would qu appear quite frequently in record names. And we can see that medium isn't unique. So none of those in themselves is unique. So we can't select one of those to be our primary key. We can let access add one. So it's added an ID down the side and it's automatically numbered those. So we could do that. Um, but in this particular case, because it's just a single table, um, I'm going to do without the key and then I'm going to click next and the final stage is to give the table a name. Now at GCSE uh, level probably the name isn't that important but from A level onwards you might be expected to use a particular naming convention so it's a good habit to get into and um, I'm going to use the Lazinski Reddick naming convention which is a naming convention that um, puts three letters at the start of the names of objects to indicate the type. So TBL means a table, FRM, a form, RPT, um, a report, etc. And what that means is if you see a list of all the objects in Access, you can see from the name what they are. So TBL for table, and then I'm going to call it records because that's the information it contains. And then click Finish. So that's done the actual importing. It's asking me if I want to remember those steps. So if, if this was something that I did um, you know, regularly, if I, on a Friday, imported the sales for the week into my company database, for example, I might want to save those steps so I can um, just use them again, a bit like recording a macro in Excel. But uh, I'm not going to do that again, so I'm just going to close. So now we can see we've got this new table called Table Records. And if we double click that, we can see it's got the information in it um, from the CSV file and the fields are named using the information from the top row of that table. So that's it. That's how you import a CSV file into Access. You create your database, you go to external data, click on the text file, answer a few questions and your data will appear in a table.